everyone and welcome to the beautiful city of Brussels, home of the Atomium, Mannequin Piss and of course the Grand Palace. But most importantly, you're here and we're here for the amazing Belgian food. So in this video, we're going to run through everything we ate here in Brussels from fries, seafood and of course my favorite, waffles. There are so many amazing food spots here in this beautiful city and without further ado, let's get started. Let's go! Let's start this list strong with what was the best food experience we had in Brussels at the legendary Tonton Garbi. This humble baguette shop slash cheesemonger serves some delicious sandwiches, but I'd say the best part about this place is Tonton Garbi or Uncle Garbi himself, who provides the warmest and most genuine service that makes you feel right at home. And he was so helpful in making us choose the perfect baguette. We got four delicious baguettes starting with an omelet filling for some brekkie vibes, an Italian-inspired olive tapenade, chorizo, tomato, and manchego cheese baguette, a sheep's cheese and spicy cheese combo with berries, and our absolute favorite, the cow cheese with papaya, pears, and Belgian chorizo. I would risk getting fined at the Auckland Airport Biosecurity Control if it meant I could take a wheel of this cheese home. Bonus points if you come here first thing too because not only does this shop get really busy, but also us being the first customers meant we got some extra special chats with Tonton Garby. What a legend. We were on the hunt for a place open early enough to fuel a packed day of sightseeing. And so we visited this beautiful cafe called Mo Cafe Tavern inside the gorgeous gallery of St. Hubert for a light breakfast meal. They do a bunch of different dishes, but we got just a simple few starting with this omelet, which, you know, was a standard omelet, some nice soup to warm us up, and of course we couldn't resist a Brussels waffle for breakfast, and the super light, crisp and airy waffle came with beautiful fresh strawberries. The food was okay, especially considering the high prices, but if you just want to soak in the beautiful atmosphere of the gallery with some Belgian bites, then this is a great place to eat at. Fries are such a must in Belgium that it should be a requirement to eat them before even leaving the country. There's an abundance of great fritters around the city, but we ran across Fritur de la Chapelle, a humble fry stand right next to a beautiful old church. We only got one portion of fries, but right away we could tell how amazing these golden fries were. The secret of course to Belgian fries is double frying them to order in beef tallow. This is an amazing spot to have your first fry experience, and when the legendary Julia Child famously lamented the day McDonald's stopped using beef tallow, I could only conclude one thing from her story. The person who made that stupid switch up definitely wasn't Belgian. Julia Child! <laughs> Now let's get some traditional Belgian food. There's a restaurant right in the Grand Place called Het Kelderke, right in the heart of the old town, and we couldn't think of a more beautiful and honestly very convenient location to get some Belgian cuisine. But honestly, don't tell your horse girl friends about this, but the main reason why we ate here was because they serve horse steak. And honestly, my curiosity was too peaked not to try. The steak came with a mushroom gravy, and honestly, it kind of just tasted like a lean beef steak. Nothing special about it, but glad I tried it. Yay! <laughs> We also got a variety of other dishes such as your classic Belgian volovant or creamy chicken with pastry, waterzoi, which is a creamy vegetable broth based stew with a colorful array of seafood, and finally some stomp which has mashed potatoes and a hunky Belgian sausage. This place really could have swung hard in the direction of absolute horrid tourist trap in such a central location, but we were pleasantly surprised that the food was actually pretty decent here. Despite Brussels being inland, seafood is one of the must-eat things here, and what better place than Nordsee? This seafood mecca is part takeout restaurant and part fishmonger, so you know you're getting the freshest seafood. We got the whole cast of Little Mermaid to devour, and they were all absolutely delicious. Of course, being in Belgium, mussels were in order, and these small but super addicting mussels were cooked in a simple garlic and parsley oil, which, if you know us, we couldn't get enough of because that garlickiness was so intense. Honestly, it's the garlic. That's what makes it. We even got other fantastic seafood such as these beautiful razor clams, some plump and perfectly cooked scampi, fried cod with aioli which was so crispy and flaky, 
a warming fish soup for the cold winter's day we found ourselves in, and we finished it with beautiful oysters, spritzed with lemon, and of course, some Tabasco. Not only is Norji an absolute must-eat, but also eating seafood surrounded by beautiful buildings, outdoors, and under the shadow of the Church of St. Catherine is a vibe you cannot beat. It's waffle time! I honestly didn't have much of a sweet tooth until I stepped in Brussels and I suddenly felt like a kid trying their hardest to get some cavities. But the main reason for this switch up is of course Belgian waffles. We hit up this amazing place called Le Roi de la Goff right in the heart of the old town for some good old liege waffles. We got a few waffles such as a pistachio caramel with whipped cream and a super Morris chocolate syrup, nuts, and more whipped cream. All the waffles were so delicious, golden, and caramelized. And before any Belgians come for us that we're desecrating these waffles with toppings, then we can only ask, if topping's so bad, then why topping tastes so good? And cause my brother was feeling like appeasing the Belgian waffle purist, he got a plain liege waffle which he thoroughly enjoyed so he can truly appreciate the waffle by itself. If you want more sweets with your waffles, then head to Gaston. This place is known for its ice cream and so we had to go with our favorite flavor, roasted pistachio, which even has a cute wafer on it. And even though we were sitting outside on a winter's day, this ice cream was well worth it. But I guess we also had some luxurious hot chalky with a generous dollop of cream to warm us up too. But of course our waffle cravings could not be satisfied so we had to get two more waffles. The plain liege waffle was okay and laid on the more spongy side, but their light, airy, and crispy Brussels waffle was the real star. Topped with beautiful caramelized apples and chantilly cream, sign me up, this was so good. We've eaten the fries, we've eaten the waffles, and now to complete the holy trinity of things you must eat in Brussels, we've got Belgian chocolate, of course. Belgium is synonymous with chocolate, so you'll find so many chocolate stores in Brussels, from the popular chains to the glaring tourist traps, but we went to two chocolatiers that we thought were absolutely fantastic. The first one is Atelier Saint Catherine. What makes this chocolate shop special is that, well, let me explain. In Belgian chocolate is most of them are actually just chocolatiers. They get like already coverture chocolate, which is like already ready-made chocolate, and then make it into their own confections. Whereas this one, they're actually bean-to-bar chocolate. So they actually process it from the bean all the way to the bar. They even showcase cocoa beans grown from different parts of the world, such as this milk chocolate made with beans from Brazil, this dark chocolate with beans from Bali, and this beautiful vanilla white chocolate with beans from Colombia. We even got some beautiful bonbons to add to the chocolate party, which were also so delightful. Next chocolate shop is Pierre Marcolini. It's named after, well, Pierre Marcolini, who's a famous Belgian chocolatier. This shop is Van say from the decor to the beautiful chocolates, just like Atelier St. Catherine, Pierre Marcolini prides itself in ethically sourcing its cacao from different origins, roasting them in-house, and processing them into such beautiful confections. Of course, some bean-to-bar chocolates were in order such as some decadent pistachio praline, a 72% dark from Sao Tome and Principe, and of course, some more bonbons because I couldn't resist. Oh yeah, and please do yourself a favor and get their hot chocolate. This stuff was so thick, so decadent, a perfect way to warm up. Apart from the holy trinity of waffles, fries, and chocolate, another must-eat in Brussels is the famous moule frites. And what better place to have your moule frites experience than Le Zinneke. It's a tram ride away in Scherbeek, and this restaurant has been a mainstay since 1956, and they do how many types of mussels? They do 69. They do 69 variations of mussels. <laughs> Before we got into the mussels, we got filet américain, another famous Belgian dish similar to a beef tartare with capers and onions mixed in for some acidity and mayo to sauce it up. Then came our mussels into massive black pots. 
In heavy quotation marks, the smaller pot was a Belgian cheese, chicory, bacon, and cream sauce, which was so rustic and comforting. And in the bigger 1.6 kilo pot was a Provencal sauce, which is a tomatoey and herby mixture with paprika. We were eating these mussels like a bag of M&Ms because they were so addicting. Of course, don't forget to chase it with a good helping of fries and aioli, it is mood for after all. And you gotta dip your mussels into that white mussel sauce as well. Belgian beer culture is legendary. I mean, the largest brewer in the world is Belgian. And what better place to sample the local poison than the famous Delirium Tap House? They're a famous beer brand in their own right, but what we came here for is their iconic 10 beer tasting platter for a pretty decent 25 euros. Don't you love it when you can euphemistically disguise literally downing 10 beers in rapping succession as a beer vegan station, if you will. I'm not much of a beer drinker myself, but it was so fascinating going through all these different beers in rapid succession. You got beers like pale ales, dark beers, amber beers, wheat beers, and even funky beers such as a raspberry beer. The iconic Crick or Belgian cherry beer, and even the circus green lime and cactus wheat beer. I guess there was also an IPA, but judging from my reaction, I guess it ain't my type of beer. Yeah. If you're looking for more traditional Belgian classics, then hit up Fond du Cercle. This fantastic and beautiful restaurant is quite popular and for good reason. The bro had to start things off with a Belgian beer, of course, before we had some absolutely comforting Belgian dishes. We got stuffed endives with a beer sauce and wrapped in bacon that had a delightful bitterness to it. The iconic Flemish stew called Carbonade made with succulent beef and served with mashed potato to soak up that super savory beer sauce. We also got an interesting rabbit stew with, you guessed it, another beer sauce, but remember that cherry beer we mentioned earlier? Yeah, that's actually the key ingredient in the stew, and it complements the rabbit so well with a light fruity beeriness. And on the not-so-Belgian category, we also got ribs. They were some pretty good ribs though, not gonna lie. They also do tandoori chicken for some reason. We love variety, I guess. We can't end the list without another waffle place, and we saved our favorite out of the three waffle places we went to. Mason Dandois is a famous store for their speculoos biscuits, but one of the branches just outside the Grand Place also do amazing waffles. For scientific purposes, we got both waffle types, the Brussels waffle with caramelized hazelnuts, salted caramel butter, and two dollops of whipped cream, and this waffle was so crispy and so airy. As good as that waffle was, my heart belongs to my beloved liege waffle. We got it with crunchy speculoos for texture and of course whipped cream. I just love how decadent it is compared to the Brussels waffle. We even came back here a second time to get the two waffles plain, and we also couldn't resist getting some of their famous speculoos biscuits for the train ride to Paris. The different flavored biscuits layered with a slab of chocolate truly made an excellent train snack. Finally, let's end the night with a place that's a one-way ticket to an instant food coma and a good night's rest. Maison Antoine. This is a Belgian fry institution that famously had the previous German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, as a regular customer whenever she'd visit the European Parliament in Brussels. I guess you could say she was a bit of a foodie. Their golden fries are pretty good, as expected, but what we came here for was the infamous monster of a sandwich, the mitraillette. The name translates to machine gun, and seeing those fries loaded on top like bullets, you can see why. They basically stuff the filling of your choice into a fry-loaded baguette, lather some sauce, and even a less leaf for nutrients, I guess. We got ours with a lovely spicy merguez sausage, and honestly, after a whole day of eating, this was a tough beast to slay. This is such a great late night street food, which I guess is fitting, cause the next place you wanna be after this sandwich is the bed. So yeah, get your stomachs ready for Brussels, cause if constantly feasting on waffles, fries, beers, and chocolate doesn't sound like a healthy and balanced diet to you, then one, yeah, you're probably right, and two, where is the fun in that? And if you want to see more of these places and our food and travel adventures in Brussels, then be sure to watch the full vlogs over on our YouTube channel. 
So that does it for our Brussels food guide. Obviously, we couldn't cover every single spot, but we do hope you find this guide useful. And do comment down below what are some of your favorite spots to eat here in Brussels. And we absolutely love stuffing ourselves with fries, mussels, and waffles. And we hope you do too. So have a safe journey here in Brussels, and bye-bye.